Hey everybody, Steve here, and welcome to another board game review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Hat Trick. This game is designed by Patrick Kowalski. It's for two players, although there is an official solo variant out there, and a game's going to take you anywhere between 45 and 60 minutes to play out. Now, this game allows you to simulate an entire soccer match right on your tabletop, and each team will be using the same deck of 32 action cards, and you'll start with similar teams, although with just a flip of the card, you can customize your team and recreate some World Cup teams or create your own set of all-stars. And the game captures all the back and forth action of a soccer match, including penalties and dramatic goalie saves. How does it all come together? Well, let's take a look inside the box. I'll show you a sample of play, and then I'll tell you what I think after further review. Okay, so here we are down on the pitch. We have the field all set up. Each game and each half, and then also after each goal is scored, this is how you'll set up the board. And to begin the game, you'll randomly determine who starts with the ball. In this case, we're gonna have blue with the ball and so you'll put the the ball token on player number six of the team that's starting. Each team has players with jerseys numbered 2 through 11 and the 12th player on the field of course is the goalie. Each of the player cards will have two sides. The first side is their normal side and you'll see there are two different sets of ball icons and this is their strength when they're on offense and on the bottom is their strength when they're on defense. And you'll notice that player cards that the ball icons they're either on the left of the card or on the right of the card and this is going to come into play with each of the action cards and how the players move and which players are allowed to move. We'll show you how that goes here through our, when our sample of play. And the reverse of the card is their star side, has a star symbol on top. And generally, this is the stronger version of that player. And what's neat about this is it's a very easy way if you want to recreate a World Cup match, it comes with this reference card and simply all you do say you want to play the USA you would just turn player number six and player number eight over to their star side and then that, that would represent the USA team and so you can see some of the stronger teams will have more players with more stars if it shows player number one as the star then you would use the star goalie cards instead of the normal goalie cards. And I say goalie cards because there are actually three of them. They don't have a normal player card. And each shot on goal, the defending team is gonna choose one of these to try to defend the shot. But we'll show you how that is used when we go through our sample play as well. Each team has an identical deck of 32 action cards and there are three different types of plays that they can have. These ones with the yellow coloring on them represent short passes and this is where the attacking team will attempt to pass the ball one line forward. The cards with the orange on them represent long passes and this is where the attacking team will attempt to pass either one, two, or three lines forward from where they are. And then the cards with the green on them represent dribbling and this is represents a one-on-one -on -one between the player with the ball and the defender directly in front of him and the player trying to move forward while still controlling the ball. Each turn is resolved fairly simply and quickly. We'll go through a turn here and we'll show you what happens on a short pass 
and then I'll just quickly tell you the differences with the long and the dribbling and then we'll do a shot on goal and so you can see how everything sort of comes together. The other cards that I haven't mentioned are there's three different shot cards and they're colored to match the action cards. So there's green, orange, and yellow. And these are gonna be different strengths for shots on goal. And they go from plus two for the green cards, three for the orange, and then plus four for the yellow cards. And you can see there's three of each of these as well to correspond with the three goalie cards. All right, so a turn, each first each player is gonna draw three cards in their hand. And then they're gonna choose which card to play. So first, the blue team here, looks like they have three short passes. And they he has two strength four and one strength one. So we're going to play this strength four. The red team will choose a card as well, and then we'll reveal them at the same time. After both players have put their card down, they'll draw a card back from the top of their deck so that they have three back in their hand. The next step after the cards are revealed is movement. And this is where what side the ball icons are on corresponding with the player cards comes into play. So because we played a card that has the ball icons on the left, blue is only allowed to move players that also have the icons on their left. And when you move a player, they can move backwards or forwards. If there is a player in that spot, they simply switch cards. And there's also four empty spaces that start on the pitch and they are in the four corners closest to the goalies. So if you're moving a player into there, you would just simply move there and then you'd leave a vacated space behind. So blue can only move players on this side. So he's gonna move player number four up to here. Swap that with the defender number nine. And then once the attacking team completes their move, they have to do what's called a mandatory pass. And what this means is they have to pass the ball to somebody on their line here. And in this case, we'll pass it to player number four. And then the red team or the defense will now do their move. So same thing, they have to adhere to which side card they played. So the red is gonna have to move somebody on this side of the field. You're gonna swap player number six out for player number seven. So now we go into actually resolving the card. So the blue team is playing a short pass, meaning they're trying to go one forward. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up to find what the strength of the action is. And how you do that for the attacking team, you add up all the ball icons that are on the top half of the card. So in this case, we have two from player four, two from player six, and then we have four from the card itself for a total of eight. Then the defense does the same thing, except they're gonna add up the icons from the bottom half of the card. So they have one from player eight, three from player six, and then three from their card for a total of seven. So the blue team just gets the, the pass off by a strength of one, and the ball moves forward to one line ahead, and it's gonna go to their teammate that has the lowest jersey number, in this case, player number seven. And you'll just simply discard those cards, and then you'll start the next turn. Okay, so we just saw what a short pass would do. The only difference with a long pass, if the attacking team plays a long pass, after they reveal the card, they have to say whether they're going to try to pass it one line, two line, or three lines in front of them. 
And then when you're figuring out the strength of the play, instead of totaling up the strength from the line where the play originates from, you're going to determine the strength of the line where the pass is going to. And then when you're doing a dribbling move, this one, you're going to actually have a one-on-one -on -one battle between the player with the ball and the player directly in front of them. And so you're just going to compare the strength of the defender's icons and whatever card was played along with the strength of the player with the ball and the card that they had played. If you ever do get into a situation where there is a teammate in front of that player, then they automatically win and he passes the ball in front of them. Or if you have a situation where a player has the ball and there's a blank space in front of them, then again, he automatically wins and just moves into that space. And so let's say that the blue player had just played that card and moved player number eight. You'll see that that now puts them into that front line, which automatically triggers a scoring opportunity. So as soon as that happens, the players We'll end that round and start the new one with a scoring opportunity. It plays somewhat similar, although there are a couple differences, which I'll point out here. First, each player is going to select their card to put down, but instead of drawing back up to three, they do not. Instead, they'll just have two cards left in their hands. Then the managers reveal their play and... We do the movement. So the same rules apply. First, the attacking team is going to move. And they played a card with the symbols on the right. So he's going to move player number 11 up. And then the player will pass to a teammate on his line. So he'll pass it over to number 11. And now the defense gets to do their movement. And here's the other change is that the defense is now allowed to change spots with the player who has the ball. And so the red team did play a card with the symbols on the left. So they are going to move player number two down to swap places with player number 11. And now the attacking team has to be able to complete the action of the card that they played to continue the scoring opportunity. In this case, we played a short pass, and that means that he needs to pass it to an adjacent teammate, even somebody diagonally away, either on his own line or one line in front or behind him. So in this case, he has an adjacent teammate right here, player number 10, so you pass it over to him. If we had played a long pass, same basic setup, except he'd be able to pass it to any teammate that's in one of the final three lines. And if he had played a dribble card, it acts as sort of a wild card in a scoring situation. And what that means is that he does not have to pass and he gets to automatically go to the, the shooting phase. But for our case, we played a yellow card, he was able to make the pass, so now we go to the shot. So the defender will pick up all three of their goalie cards, and the attacking player will draw, will pick up the shooting cards that correspond with the color of the card that they played. So he'll grab these three yellow cards. And as you can see, the goalie cards, there's the three of them have a plus and a minus symbol in different spots. And what this means is this one would be the goalie guessing that the shot is going to go high, guessing that the shot is going to go left, and guessing that the shot is going to go right. And the attacking cards have the same thing, a shot high, shot right, or a shot left. So the attacking team puts their guess down, the defender puts his guess down, so the goalie is guessing left, and the shot is going high. So now we total up the strength of the shot, so they add a plus four for the shot card, 
and four for the player making the kick for a total of eight. And we're gonna see if the goalie is able to stop that. And how he does that, you'll see that there's a grid here that shows different numbers, and that's how many cards that are gonna to get to draw from their action deck to try to stop the shot. So this player is in the middle, in the second row, so that means they get to draw three. He didn't guess that it was going up, so there's no bonus, but there's also no negative to it. If, he, if the shot had gone right, then there would have been a negative, and he would have drawn one last card, and if he had guessed correctly where the positive symbol is, he'd get to draw one extra one. So in this case, we're gonna draw three cards and we're trying to be a strength of eight. So we're just gonna draw the cards, total up the icons. So we have two, five, six, and that is not gonna be enough. So the goal goes in and blue goes up one to nothing. Okay, so I also wanted to show what happens when the defense wins one of these actions or what happens when there's a tie. So let's say that the blue team is on the attack and they played a short pass. Everybody's done their movement, so now we count up the strength. And the blue team will have two, four, five, six, seven. And the red team has three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they would win by one. In the case of a short pass, the ball would be turned over to the defending team, whichever one has the lowest jersey number. So in this case, the red player number six would receive the ball, and then the start of the next turn, red would be on the attack. If it had been a long pass, the turnover would happen at the line where the pass was going, so let's say if they blue team had tried to pass it down here and they failed, then the same thing, the player on the defense with the lowest jersey number would take over the ball. And if it was a dribble card that was played, then the player in front of the player with the ball would take over. And now if there is a tie, if the red team had played a card with three on it, the tiebreaker would always go to the team that played the strongest card, but in this case, both have played a strength three card, and so when that happens, then you get a foul. And the fouls always go against the defending team, and so the first time it happens, they're gonna get a yellow card, and then if it happens again, they'll swap it out for a red card, and the defending player opposite the player with the ball would get removed from the match. Now when a foul happens, if it's anywhere in the middle of the pitch, the play would be considered a success, and so you would move, so in this case of a short pass, they would move it up one line. The next action would be a free kick, and what's gonna happen, the managers will move a player, but this time the defense will move first, Say that red will move up there, and then the blue team would move, the attacking team would move, and then the attacking team gets to play a card, and regardless of where they are on the pitch, it will be considered a scoring opportunity. And then you would resolve it the same way that you would a normal scoring opportunity. Now if the foul happens down here, and let's say that it was on a dribble action, and a foul had occurred, and the play would have resulted in the offensive team going to the scoring line, then you would get a penalty kick. And you would resolve it the same way you do a normal shot on goal, except that the goalie is going to draw one less card than he normally would during a normal kick. Okay guys, so there's a look at hat trick. Now, I didn't go through all of the different scenarios that can play out. I just wanted to show you real briefly how uh, a sample turn would play, give you an idea of the ebb and the flow of the game. And it really is an interesting strategy game 
uh, because there's no random element to the game. Each player has the same players on the field and they each have the same exact deck of action cards. So what you end up with, it's almost like a chess match in trying to utilize your stronger cards at the key moments of, of the match and knowing when to burn your weaker cards and it, it's very very interesting uh, one of the things that really clicked for me that I thought was a neat touch is when you get down for a scoring opportunity is having to complete that action before you can get the shot on goal where you can use the dribble and that automatically lets you pass to go right to the shot. However, that is the weakest shot on goal, where you only get a plus two on the card. Whereas if you try to do a short pass, that allows you to get a plus four. So it's an interesting trade-off, whether you want to try to get a stronger shot, but possibly miss the scoring opportunity if the defense is able to move their players around so that you don't have a teammate that you can pass to. Or if you want to just have the, the sure the sure thing and play that dribble card. This is certainly a game that when you first look at it, it seems almost too simple for what it's doing. But then you realize there's really lots of depth to the game. But not so much that it bogs it down where it's going to stretch out beyond an hour of gameplay. And if you're looking for... A way to mix the game up it's very easy to just play with those star cards recreate one of the world cup teams so that each of the teams aren't quite equal and you have stronger players on the different teams and you know so that's a, an interesting way to mix it up and especially when you have a star goalie because the difference with the star goalies is that they don't have any negatives on their cards they can only have positives so that will definitely keep the scoring down when you have star goalies on the field. Now, I did mention in the introduction that there is a solo variant and it's an official solo variant because it was put out on Board Game Geek by the designer. So I'll put a link to that if it's something you wanna check out. It's a interesting way to play the game and it automates the decisions of the AI where instead of them having a hand of cards, they're just simply drawing the top card of the deck. So it's an a interesting way to play out the game, but I feel like this game really shines when you have a, a two-player game. And as I said, that's the, the best way I can describe it. It's having like a chess match with somebody and holding on to your stronger cards until you can use them at the, the correct opportunity. And then, of course, it's, it's a lot of fun with the... The one in three chance uh, when you have the shot on goal of guessing correctly where it's going to and sort of the the thrill if you guess it right and then of course the heartache if you you guess incorrectly guys this is a really fun game if you're looking for something a little different maybe from other soccer games you played definitely this is something to check out they actually have a couple of expansions that are gonna go up on Kickstarter later this year that'll add a little bit more depth and variety to what happens during the game. There's some information up on the website for the game. I'll post links to that as well so you can check it out. But this is really a fantastic game the way it is right now. And if you're looking for a sort of medium weight strategy game that revolves around the world of soccer, definitely check out Hat Trick. All right, everybody, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. My name's Steve, and I'll see you next time after further review.